What's up, everybody? I'm Mike, and today we're diving into the iconic drum sound of Paramore's Riot. You know the one, that massive, powerful, explosive drum sound that helped redefine modern rock music? Well, today we're gonna try to recreate that sound. And stick around, because later in the video, I'll tell you how to get your hands on the drum samples I create from this session. So let's start with the drums themselves. They used a handful of snares on this record, including a brass pork pie snare, a DW, and of course, the massive 14 by eight Pearl Vinnie Paul snare. I don't have that snare, and people are asking stupid money for them now. So I'm gonna go with my trusty Pearl Steve Ferroni brass snare. It's got a ton of attack, plenty of depth, and maybe most importantly for this sound, it's got a really nice ring to it. For the rest of the kit, we're going with a pretty standard rock setup with a 22 inch Gretsch round badge kick, as well as 12, 14, and 16 inch Gretsch toms. Now let's talk tuning. For the snare, you can hear a somewhat sharp C pitch ringing out in the original track. So I tuned the top head to match that pitch and then just went nice and tight for the bottom head. For the toms, I wanted to get a pretty short decay out of them. So I ended up tuning the rezzo head a minor sixth above the batters. The closer the pitch of the two heads, the longer the decay. I usually do a minor third between them. So going with a sixth gave me a really short punchy sound. Here's a chart with all the exact pitches, drum heads, and dampening I used. So feel free to grab a screenshot of it if you wanna try this tuning out on your kit. I wasn't able to find much about the mic setup from the Riot session, but I did find some photos from some Breaking Benjamin sessions that David Bendeth and Dan Corniff did around the same time. So I'm gonna assume that they used a fairly similar setup for Riot. Again, it seemed like a pretty typical rock drum setup. For my setup, I used an AKG D112 and a Loughton Clarion on kick. The D112 is providing all the attack and character, and the Loughton is adding some extra low end and much needed length to the kick. On snare, I've got a pair of SM57s on top and bottom. The top mic is really doing most of the work here. I'm just sneaking in a little bit of the bottom for some extra top end sizzle. Then I've got Loughton LS308s on toms. I love these mics on toms. I'll never go back to 421s after using these. For overheads, I've got a pair of SERN17 small diaphragm condensers. I'm a huge fan of these on overheads. They're nice and bright and upfront like the 451s that were most likely used on Riot, but they're quite a bit smoother and just overall more pleasant in my opinion. Then we've got three room mics set up. I've got a pair of Sony C80s out in the corners of the room, giving some nice space and air and width to the kit. And then I'm using the Loughton LA320 pretty close to the drums as a mono room mic. This one's adding a ton to the overall drum sound here. It's adding a lot of length and depth and character to those close mics, while still remaining focused and clear from being pretty close to the drums. And by the way, I'll link to all the mics I'm using in the description down below, in case you wanna check any of them out for yourself. For processing of the mics, all the EQ was pretty standard stuff, like fairly heavy handed, but nothing out of the ordinary for pop punk or rock. Boosting a bunch of top end on most of the close mics, carving out a little bit of the mid range, nothing too crazy. I think the real secret to this sound is in the compression and the reverb. For compression, David Bendeth has said that they relied heavily on an ADR complex compressor in parallel for this drum sound. They probably used some compression on the individual channels as well, likely from the SSL console, but the complex is definitely the secret sauce here. It has a super unique character to it that makes the drums sound like they're exploding out of the speakers. Kive Audio just released the plug-in version of this compressor, and Boz Digital also has one that they did in collaboration with David Bendeth himself. I've been testing them both out, and they're definitely a bit different from each other, but they both do that exploding drum thing quite well. So definitely worth trying one out if you're chasing this sound. And it sounds to me like they went heavy with this compression. Every time I thought I was pushing it hard enough, I'd compare it to the original track and realize I needed like twice as much.
This much compression is definitely making our cymbals a little bit aggressive here, which I'm sure is a big part of the reason they blended in samples on the original track, so that they could compress the samples like crazy and back off the compression on the overheads and rooms a bit. But since I'm using this session to make drum samples, I don't want to use drum samples in my drum samples. So I'm just rolling with slightly aggressive cymbals. The reverbs are probably an equally big part of the drum sound, or at least for the snare drum. In the actual track, they used a Yamaha SPX90 and an AMS RMX16. I'm not aware of any plug-in version of the SPX90, so I decided to try out the Eventide SP2016. I'm using a mono instance of this, and this one really isn't meant to be super obvious. It's more there to kind of blend with and extend the room sound. Then for the RMX16, I'm using Glow from Wave Alchemy. I've got it set to the Nonlin 2 setting at four seconds. This is like that 80 sound. It's instantly recognizable, and they went pretty heavy handed with that in the mix. It kind of adds to that explosive feeling while also adding extra width to the snare. It's also worth mentioning that a big part of the sound comes down to Zach Farrow's drumming. You can tell he was hitting hard on this record, just adding to that powerful, explosive sound. I'm definitely no Zach Farrow, but I did my best to recreate that power and energy. So now let's put everything together and hear how close I got. I think that's really close, as close as I could expect to get using different drums in a different room with a different drummer. And if you want to get these exact sounds for yourself, I went ahead and made a drum sample pack from this session, aptly named the Misery Kit. They're available over at bettermixes.com, link in description, as part of both the essential pack and the complete collection, along with a ton of other awesome samples that I think you'll love. But anyway, let me know in the comments how you think I did with this sound, and what drum sound you'd like to see me recreate next. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.